Hey guys, what's going on? So in today's video, I'm very excited because I'm gonna be reviewing a pair of engineer boots from Zero's Boots, a Japanese company that many of you may be familiar with. I'm actually not very familiar with Zero's. I do follow them on Instagram and have for a while now. They actually make a lot of different models of engineers as well as other boots. They're actually pretty well known for their sandals too. But these are actually my buddy Mike Smith's boots and these are in a size 7 double E and these are for sale. So these are in natural chrome excel. It's a size 7 double E and it fits like a six and a half triple E he says. Brand new they're $720 plus an extra 50 for eight inch boots, which these are, and an 11 month to 13 month wait. He's asking $500. Again, you're getting these at a discount. He tried to get them on, and as you can see, they're in great condition. I don't think he's walked around in them at all, hardly, probably wore them once, I think. And uh, so they're in mostly new condition. They're absolutely beautiful boots. And so if you're interested in these, I will ship them out personally to you and I'm just gonna be sending the money to Mike. As a gesture, I will throw in a cuff of your choice. I've got some amazing Mariam Jungle Green horse rump cuffs, as well as some fire red cuffs. So just let me know, I have other cuffs on my website, dalesleatherworks.com. I'll throw in a set for you for free if you buy these boots, and I will ship them out to you myself. So yeah, once again, these are basically an $800 boot and a year's weight, and you're getting them for 500, which is a steal. This is going to be an engineer boot. It's in natural chrome Excel. This is from Zeros in Japan. They include a really cool logo stamped into the front of the shaft here, Zeros. Those motorcycle boots made in Japan. So this is an eight inch shaft engineer boot. We've got the front strap. We've got five holes there and it looks like the strap is very well positioned. My engineers in Chloe crush shell cord and I actually had to add a hole to one of those but in this case it doesn't look like you'll need to do that. The top uh, shin strap I guess you'd call that is also very well positioned there. We've got a rolled top edge at the throat. Nice little split here for foot clearance to get your foot in there. We've got a separate heel counter triple stitched in and that is a really beautiful heel counter actually. Yeah, it's got a slight bump at the top which is very stylish. Then we've got a separate back heel strip back there as well with a pull tab. What's really cool is it is it stitched in and then it comes up and in a loop the pull tab actually is stitched into the inside of the boot which I have some engineers like that as well. That's a really cool feature, as opposed to just having a separate pull tab just like attached to the outside. This one actually goes inside. The last shape is really nice. It's really nicely rounded out at the toe, and it's got a good bump too, I would say as well. Good, good amount of volume in that toe, as opposed to, I see a lot of engineers with like a collapsed toe, and that's a really cool look as well. But lately, I've been preferring the bump in the toe. I think that looks really good. And then the welt, it's 180 degree double stitch down welted. It's got a single welt stitch extending to the 270 degree mark. We've got a single vegetable tanned leather midsole here, followed by a Vibram outsole mini lug commando. Three layers of thick veg tan in the heel. Looks like a Cuban heel back here. The heel is beautifully finished. The veg tan looks like it's thick, probably probably 12 or 14 ounce thick veg tan. A lot of good arch support there. And then you can see the bump from the shank in here as well. So lots of good arch support. And yeah, on the inside, it's got stamped uh, 2022 E, so the year it was made and the size. They're unlined. These zeros, I would say the selling point to these is since they're not as famous as White Cloud, you can get these boots for a lot cheaper. Again, these are still Japanese made, so you will be paying a little extra for Japanese made as compared to Indonesian made. So for example, my recent engineers that I just got were about five or $600, whereas these were 700. So just keep that in mind. When you're gonna buy from Japan, 
the cost will be a little bit higher than Indonesia. Carl Murawski recommends these as a cheaper alternative to White Cloud. And yeah, looking at their pictures from brand to brand, yeah, these are very comparable, I would say. Let's go over the history of the engineer boot. The ever trusted Wikipedia article here says that uh, engineer boots, also known as engineer's boots or engineering boots, are an American type of traditional leather work boots. Their laceless, rugged construction made them popular among motorcycle riders. Originally developed in the 1930s for firemen working on steam locomotives, the boots gained substantial popularity in the post-World War II era during a growing motorcycling culture. They became popular symbols of teenage rebellion in the 1950s and a common component of greaser wear. They were later adopted by skinheads and punks in the 1970s. By the 2010s, engineer boots were being popularly worn for fashion purposes, especially by non-traditional customers such as women, young urban professionals, and hipsters. More and more hipsters are now wearing engineer boots. I will throw myself into that category. I do love them. Uh, initially, I was not a fan, but as I've grown and evolved in the boot game, I really love the engineer. I think it's just such a manly looking boot. Really solid. I love the plain toe look that they have. I love the taller shafts. Yeah, they're popular as motorcycling boots because this tall shaft will protect you from heat coming off the engine. They just have an incredibly manly aesthetic. It is kind of difficult getting in and out of them. I actually have a boot jack for that purpose. The boot jack essentially comes back here, grips the back heel of the boot so you can slide out. Uh, because I do have a bad back and I have a very hard time when I have to pull these things off. And I also have a very long shoehorn to get my foot in because the way that the boot grips to your foot is not via a lace-up mechanism, but rather in the shape of the boot itself. It has to more or less grip you pretty well so that your foot doesn't slip out of it. And so for that reason, it's kind of difficult to get in and out. As for the infamous toe track, I don't see one on these. I don't believe that these come with a tow track. That's okay. I think the tow track looks great, but it's, it's one of those things. It's subjective. It's not one of those absolutely mandatory things to have. Another feature that I just noticed is when you undo the front strap, you've got a really nice polished brass roller buckle here that is riveted closed. It's a very nice feature. The roller buckle is very well affixed to the boot. I would also say that since this is Chrome Excel, Chrome Excel does stretch. It's shrunken down by 25% in the tanning process. Some of that shrinkage will have been lost during the lasting process of these boots. These look a little too small for me to even attempt to try to get my foot in here. Uh, I'm a nine brand. I wear an eight and a half in most US boot brands. These are a seven double E. So they actually kind of hurt my foot just looking at these. <laughs> so yeah, these are my Grant Stones in size eight and a half against these seven double E's. It's, it's hard to tell, but I think if you wear a size probably seven and a half in US boot brands, I would say these would probably generally be a good fit for you. Even a seven, they, they might be a little generous because of the double E width, but I would say if you typically wear, a, you know, in general, size seven and a half, these would probably be a really good fit for you, for sure. So Mike actually ordered these using Zero's custom ordering method that they have on their website. So these are the Type 1 Chrome Excel boots. The leather is Horween Chrome Excel. It's on their round toe last. The height is 10 inches, typically. The buckle is brass. It's got a single midsole with a natural edge. The outsole is a Vibram 430. It's a double welt stitch E width. Delivery within 11 to 12 months. So this was released from the start of Zero's brand Engineer Boots Type 1. In addition to the robust construction to protect the foot that did not change from that time, the specification that adopted the direct welt after a minor change canceled the hardness particular to Goodyear welt and realized a supple wearing comfort with high flexibility. The structure that pursues fit, functionality, practicality, and durability cannot be expressed in words. It is an Engineer Boot packed with all the data that Zero's has now. And East West Apparel in the UK actually sells Zero's Engineer boots. And here's what they have to say about it. 
We've loved Zero's sandals from the moment we saw them and have salivated over their boot images from afar. So having an engineer made to spec by them was an exciting thought and a no-brainer. We went back and forth with options and design until we arrived at what we think is the perfect engineer within this style silhouette. Nothing is perfect, of course, but we think these are about as close to perfect as you can get. We were so pleased when we opened the box, even more so after trying them on. They are made on Zero's flat toe last. This is really a lovely silhouette. Almond rounded toe with good width and not much taper. Slim and very curvy in the waist with high arch, almost like white, and normal to slim in the heel. It's low profile across the lower foot, but with enough height for your toes, which gradually rises above the arch to make it easier to get them on. Yes, you heard it, an engineer boot with a low profile toe that has enough room in the arch to help the higher arched mammal. The shaft is slim for tighter hems as well, but with enough width at the ankle to ease them on. Great. The comfort is immediate. The arch support feels great, but not overbearing. The weight is medium for an engineer, good heft, but not clunky at all. They are a seriously comfy pair of tall shaft boots. The leather is silky smooth and soft horse butt with mixed grain from the esteemed Mariam Tannery in Italy and is dyed in Japan. It is thick, but very pliable. A beautiful color with a very high end feel and luster. We can't wait to see some worn in images. Made in Japan by people who know what they are doing. What's more, they even come with extra leather insoles that you can add or remove to adjust the fit. I'll leave a link to the East West Apparel Zero's Engineer Boots in brown Mariam horse butt. Those are built on a different last compared to these. These are on a round toe with a structured toe, extra structure in that toe, whereas the Zero's Engineer Boots in horse butt brown, those are gonna be an unstructured toe, more sleek of a silhouette, more of an almond shaped toe, which is very attractive. Minor differences there, but I'll leave a link to that as well. And so this is according to Zero's themselves. Zero's mainly develops semi-order custom boots. Since it is something you wear every day, the most important thing is toughness to protect your feet. We are strongly committed to consistent production at our own factory and aim to be an unchanging boot brand with sincerity. Since 2011. So once again, please DM me on Instagram. My username is aerosurferlv. I will ensure that they are properly insured and I will also include a cuff of your choosing. Uh, again, that's 500 bucks. I'm just trying to help my buddy Mike out with a sale and, and hopefully move these to a home where they will be loved and cherished and worn. And I can tell you, natural Chrome XL ages like none other. In fact, here are my natural Chrome XL diesel boots. I've had these about five years. They have just aged beautifully. So there you go. Lots of wear on these. They've really gone from this like sort of lighter olive-ish brown and they've really darkened up quite a bit. Nothing patinates like Chrome XL. Oh, I love it. The vamp brakes are just amazing. The scuffs that it takes on are just beautiful. I love everything about the way that this leather ages. It's, it's absolutely insane. They look so good the more you beat them up. So anyways, let's keep the love of boots alive. Thanks a lot for watching. I will see y'all in my next video.